What's up guys? This video is going to be a bit of a long one, but I've had a few requests to do a video tour of the boat that I'm currently on. So we're starting out here with a picture of my ship, the Jampugu Maru 81. It's pretty much brand new, just over a year old now. Got on the ship uh, on September 29th of 2021. It's now uh, January 9th of 2022 so i've had at least a few months now to learn about the ship and i'll do my best to pass that knowledge on to you guys i'll start with just a quick overview of the ship before we go into the video so it'll make more sense as you follow along ship can be divided up into four decks starting with the lower deck which is where most of the action happens it's where the crew brings the fish on board once they're in the net the lower deck also holds one speedboat a skiff boat and the net, which is underneath a red cover here. We have the mid deck, which holds two more speed boats, controls for the cranes, and a bunch of supplies such as salt for the fish holds or materials to make a pile, aka rafts. But I'll talk about those a little more later on in the video. After that, you have the upper deck, which is where the bridge is, as well as our parts room for the helicopter. And then finally, all the way up top is the heli deck. So we're starting the video in my room that I share with my mechanic, Andy. The bunk isn't the roomiest thing in the world, but it still works pretty good for the monthly rent of zero dollars. Found a decent way to set up my laptop down below with a TV screen up above. Then I can just use a Bluetooth keyboard or a gaming controller while I lie back in my bunk. The mattress itself is really thin and firm, so I'm just using layers of blankets for padding, which ends up working pretty well, actually. I also got a bunch of Velcro and started just attaching things like my TV remote, headset, and hard drives with all my movies and TV shows on them to the walls. That way it saves space on the shelves and makes for a little bit easier access. Then up above my bunk is Andy's bunk. And to the left we have a little bench. And then our storage cabinets for uh, clothes and all the extra supplies. And we're lucky enough to have a fridge and a freezer in our room, so we can store some drinks, snacks, or uh, supplies for cooking meals if we want to. And to the left of that, got a little table, some more storage space. Now we're stepping outside of our room into the main hallway of the mid deck, where the officers of the boat stay. Got some engineering drawings of the ship's layout, with a bunch of statistics on them. Then the captain's room on the right. The chief officer, who is also my spotter, is on the left. And then all the way at the end on the right is the radio operator. Just outside this door, we've got our own washing machine. Then back inside, we have another sink with everybody's coffee mugs and toothbrushes. And heading back to the other side of the hall, all the way down on the left, we have the fish master's room. He leaves the door open during the day and allows us to go chill in his room if we want and use his coffee machine whenever, which is pretty cool of him to do. Not many fish masters would let you even go near their rooms. And the staircase to the right goes down to the crew's living quarters on the lower deck. To the left of that, we have the officer's bathroom. Not really much to say about this, but they do keep it really clean since the crew cleans it daily. Then over to the officer's shower. I'm pretty sure that only like three of us actually use it, and the others go downstairs to the uh, onsen or the uh, crew area. Shower is designed to use while seated, probably because it's super sketchy trying to stand up, not slip and die on the soapy floor when you're in rough seas. Ask me how I know. But it does have a nice view of the ocean just outside this door. Then just outside the hallway, the door goes to the mid deck. There's some really noisy air pumps out here, a clothesline in case you don't want to use the dryers downstairs, and more storage space. Turning around past what would have been the observer's room if we had one, we're heading up to the bridge.
But first, a quick stop in the sick room or the first aid station. But luckily, I don't think we've ever actually had an injury or a sickness serious enough to need this room, but it's nice that we do have it just in case. Starting off in the bridge, we have the navigation station, complete with all the charts, GPS units, and certificates you could ever want. That's Andy, my mechanic. He's really awesome. He's a great mechanic, and he's been doing this for, I think, 12 years now. He's a pretty brave guy to sign up for a year of dealing with mead on top of it. So the bridge is chock full of different screens that still confuse me at times, but I'll do my best to give an overview. This screen is a more high-level radar that picks up storms. The red is a kind of large rainstorm, and the blue trail shows where it's been. So this one's moving northeast away from us. To the left, we have a navigation screen with various charts. Then the main control pedestal for the ship. This screen to the left is one of the main ones I reference. It shows a quick overview of the wind directions and speeds for the area, as well as a blue track line showing where we have been, and it'll show a white line uh, to show where we're going if we uh, have anything programmed into the autopilot. This screen is more of a mid-level radar that picks up other helicopters flying and overlays other ship traffic as well, which is pretty useful. Next one over is a low-level radar that we use to find birds, which is usually what I chase in the helicopter, because the birds will lead us to the fish most times. Each of the red blobs on the screen usually shows a uh, flock of birds with a blue trail to show their general direction of flight. These final three screens over here that the radio operator is using show what I believe is a sonar readout that we use when we're setting the net. We're about to meet up with the skiff now, so we've almost completed a full circle. You can see the red trail on the net showing up on the screens. Then down below that, we have three more fish finder screens, but these ones are broadcast to us from the speedboat sitting on top of the school. They give us the depth of the school and a rough idea of the size from the uh, sonar on the middle screen. And we have the last three screens that show the ship's fish finder, as well as data on water temperature and the water's current uh, speed and directions. Above the radio operator, there are receivers that show the depth of the net at the front, the middle, and the rear. Just outside, you can see the captain at his secondary control station for the ship. Pretty much exclusively uses the station while we're in the fishing grounds or going into port, because from there he has a pretty good view of the side of the ship, so he can see the net as we drop it. And finally at the rear of the bridge, there's an office area where they do all the record keeping and office duties. I use this area to send my company weekly and monthly reports. I also have a little Japanese prayer station in the back. It looks like it's still decorated for New Year's. Then stepping outside this door, we have the upper deck. Right off to the side of the staircase, you see the fuel pumps that are for the helicopter. Then around the side of the ship, past the captain's station, it's where the crew spends their time when they're not tending to the ship. Right now, they're searching for fish with their binoculars, or at least trying to look like they are. Luckily, there doesn't seem to be any rivalries between the different nationalities on the boat. They actually work together as a crew, which seems kind of rare on other boats. Back behind the bridge is the parts room and my little camping chair that I spend way too much time on just waiting to fly. Uh, parts room is pretty messy right now, but we've got pretty much anything we could need and then some extras. Keep my helmet and my life vest hanging right here. That way I don't have to run back to my room or all over the place looking for it when they ask me to fly. Then passing through the little breezeway to the other side of the deck, you can see the orange speedboat. 
This one mainly gets used for herding or pushing fish to try to keep them in the net while we're closing it. Then, up next to the bridge are some of the buoys I talked about earlier. We attach these mainly to uh, man-made piles, aka rafts. And what those are is essentially a little bit of a floating habitat that will attract uh, bait fish, which usually attracts the tuna. So we attach these to the piao in order to keep uh, track of them so we can routinely check them and hopefully find a big sized school of adult fish nearby when we come back to check uh, maybe weeks or months later after we drop it. Next we're taking a quick jump up to the heli deck where my helicopter lives. It's an A model Hughes OH-6 pretty fun and responsive little machine to fly. Some people call these the Ferrari of the sky, but they must be talking about the ones with the bigger engines than I have. When we're not in uh, fishing mode, we pull the blades off the helicopter, push it to the back of the deck to protect it better from the salt water spray, because that stuff's very corrosive to the aircraft. Then we put a nice custom cover over it to further protect it, and then a whole bunch of rope to secure it. Looking at the back side of the heli deck, we have the blade box, as well as a few storage cabinets for fire extinguishers, tools, aircraft covers, and all that fun stuff. Fuel from down below gets pumped into a filter inside the left cabinet and then goes out to the aircraft from there. Bustle got a fresh water hose for washing the aircraft, a salt water hose that never really gets used, plus an air hose connection for uh, servicing the floats. Now back downstairs we're heading down to the mid deck. First thing you'll see is the purple speedboat. That is our second officer's boat and the one that has all the extra electronics on it. When we find fish, he'll go sit on top of the school and transmit the uh, sonar and other data back to the ship for the fish master to use. Uh, back behind us is another two noisy air pumps right outside our room and a life raft that we'll hopefully never need. Then we have controls for the boat lift that deploys and picks up the boat. I'll show you a little clip now because it's pretty cool to watch and something I never considered before. So back on the deck now, you can see the piles that the crew has made, as well as the two cranes that they'll use to drop them in the water once we're ready. Then we got our washing machine and another air pump over here. When you look at the uh, piles, you notice that's really just a bunch of thin rope that they attach plastic strips to and then dangle underneath the uh, wooden wire spool pieces. Then heading further back the boat, Past the uh, speedboat is the main control panel for the cranes and the winches for the net. Uh, I can't really explain too in depth what's going on back there, but it does look complicated to learn at first because there is quite a few uh, pulleys and winches that they use. Next we're going to jump up to the crow's nest and see the best views on the ship. It's got a pretty good view of the heli deck from up there, as well as really the entire ship for that matter. You can see all along the handrails we've got these LED light bars facing down like stadium lights. 
Those things are seriously bright when they're all on. We've also got a uh, spotlight on the other side of the crow's nest that we've really only seen them use once so far. And we go up one more level to the top of the crow's nest for another look around. Water was so calm and blue that day that I just couldn't get enough of it and had to stop and take in the view and show you guys as well. Certainly feels like quite a long way down compared to when you're standing on the ground looking up at the crow's nest. Now we're inside the crow's nest. It's basically just a copy of what the bridge has, but with a much better view. The fish master as well as two of the crew spend uh, all day up here just searching for fish. Uh, being so high up has its advantages, but you also do feel the motion of the ship being really amplified. Now back down on the mid deck, we're going to head down to the lower deck. First thing you'll see off to the right is this white box that holds the cables for the nets on spools. I think it's got something like 15,000 feet worth of steel cable wound up inside of it. Then you'll see the blue speedboat, some of the nets off to the right there, a lot of the crew area, kitchens on the left, then back over on the right, we've got some outdoor showers and urinal. Also, the uh, crew likes to keep all their supplies out here, all their uh, rain jackets, helmets, gloves, etc. They've got uh, lockers further down on the right. Over on the left, got another bathroom. Just past that, two more outdoor showers. Then back on the right side, some more storage. And then the crew's lockers where they keep uh, extra gear for when we're pulling in fish. Past that, even more storage. Then we get just around to the left here, and we get to the door that heads down to the engine room. Right, so I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about too much here, so this next part isn't going to have too much commentary. We're starting out in the shop, though. has uh, pretty much any tool that you can need for small jobs or repairs. But beyond that, we're having to do the work in port, from my understanding. Probably worth mentioning that it felt like it was about 90, maybe 95 degrees in the engine room. And it's also so loud that I couldn't hear anything that the uh, crew member was telling me as we were walking around. Just past the staircase we came down on, we get to the upper level of the engine room. I was pretty surprised at how clean everything still was. With the uh, polished metal, nice paint, blue plastic covers on the flooring. They definitely did a pretty good job for this thing already being over a year old. I think these small guys right here are generators, but uh, don't quote me on that one. And stepping inside this room, you will see the control room for the engine. And that's about as far as my knowledge goes on this room. A big chrome ducting towards the back is the engine exhaust. It goes all the way up uh, just behind the heli deck. Then just under the white cover here is a crane they can use for engine work. And now we are stepping to the lower deck of the engine room. This giant thing running the length of the walkway on the left here is the main engine. They say it produces 2,942 kilowatts, which comes out to uh, 3,945 bald eagles, if you're curious the conversion on that one.
And I believe this right here on the left is the main generator for the ship, but I'm not entirely sure on that one. And heading back upstairs, you can see the exhaust again. I think it puts out some serious heat, even with the shielding over it. Now the crew told me that these green tanks here were compressors, but honestly I have no idea if I believe that one or not. It doesn't really look like it would be a compressor. This little staircase leads down to a pretty tight passage that has all the lines for the freezers for the fish holds. But it was much cooler down there and I kind of wanted to stay to be honest. And you get a nice view of my fingers as I go back upstairs. I mean, just look at those things. Stepping through this door, temperature drops like 20 degrees, which is pretty awesome after just a few minutes in the engine room. Each of the holes in the ground here is a hold for the fish. I believe that there are 11 on the ship. And the metal thing going down the middle is a slide or a chute that they can reconfigure and move around to direct the fish into their respective holds as the crew dumps them in from above. We tried lighting this one up with a flashlight, but it didn't really work at all. There's really not too much else to show you down here, but down on the end they had one lit up so I could show you just how large they are. Ship can hold uh, 1,100 tons of fish, which comes out to about 2.4 million pounds, which is kind of a mind numbing number when you think about it. Now all the way in the back of the ship, we've got additional food storage as well as hydraulics for the rudder. And that's about it for uh, down below. Now I just uh, jump back upstairs and we continue the tour on the lower deck. stations or put some movies on it so they have a big TV to use which is kind of cool. Got a little announcement board up there looks like they got an 8 o'clock start time tomorrow. Just any sort of pertinent info they'll uh, post up there. I usually can't read any of it because it's always in Japanese and I'm trying to use Google Translate on the camera app which is less than ideal. And a 
screen up here that shows our uh, just trip info. We've got all sorts of options right there. You can scroll through different pages and cameras and stuff like that. We usually keep it on this one here or one of the other uh, pages, two pages, but that shows all sorts of info that's generally doesn't really matter. You can see we're sailing with another boat right there right now, Fishmaster's friend, the AC Maru. some sort of fruit sitting right here. Got bananas, apples, pears, oranges, whatever. They've always got something fresh, which is pretty awesome. You should come in and grab one of those when we do our uh, daily temperature checks. Gotta do them every morning and afternoon because of COVID and all that fun stuff. Kind of pointless, but whatever. Also gotta make sure we're always stocked on ramen. You know, essential on every boat. And got the kitchen. Nothing super exciting about it, but it seems kind of average commercial kitchen. What is pretty cool though is the uh, the cooks don't mind if we come in here and uh, cook for ourselves ever, as long as they're not cooking a meal for everybody. Uh, people come in here all the time and just start cooking whatever meals the, they feel like at the time. And they've got it pretty well stocked usually, so you can find just about anything you want. They've got the uh, vegetable chamber and the meat chamber, they call them. You just pop them open and got your pick of whatever you want to use. They don't mind, you can just start using stuff. for a quick teleport to the back of the boat. Just under the speedboat is one of the two nets that they use to scoop fish out from the main net and into the ship. All of the metal squares in the deck are uh, different fish holds. The crew just lifts one of them up and starts dumping fish into the holds down below. Which I'll show a quick clip of now. All the way on the back of the boat is the net, told it's 6,340 feet long and goes 560 feet deep. It's attached on one end of the skiff boat, which just slides off the back of the main boat when we deploy the net. The ship then circles around the school and back to the skiff boat, where we then grab the other end of the net back and close the net around the fish. Directly overhead are the cranes they use for the nets and cables. And here you can see the cables that I was talking about earlier, as well as the control station for them directly behind it. That's one of the two cooks on the ship. Uh, on top of working all day with the rest of the crew, they make some really good food. So we're all pretty happy to have them on board. 
these little packets in the blue container are the dive bombs that they throw in the water to try and keep the fish inside the net. These packets turn the water a deep green and sink straight down, which creates what hopefully looks like a wall to the fish and should uh, turn them around so they don't just swim out of the opening in the net before it closes. Now past the mess hall towards the front of the ship we have some more storage as well as uh, cabinets for tools. And on the left here behind the boards is even more storage. They got extra foam for the uh, net, extra rope, uh, tarps, anything you can think of really. Now out this door is the bow of the ship where the crew accesses the controls for the anchor as well as a few other uh, pulleys that they use uh, while fishing or uh, pulling into the dock. Maybe one of these days I'll go stand on the front and reenact the Titanic scene. That's all I have for this video though. If you guys have any questions or want to see something else on the boat that I might have skipped over or didn't show much of, just let me know and I'll try to get back to you guys. Thanks for watching.